Cruising on a massive city on the sea may be a dream vacation for many, but if you can't stand large crowds or waiting in lines, a week on an MSC megaship may sound more like a nightmare. But what if we were to tell you that within these massive MSC ships is an exclusive ship within a ship which less than one out of 10 guests can access? Where lines and crowds are almost non-existent and you have your own private restaurant, lounge, pools, and even a butler. Well, this can all be found in MSC's Yacht Club where we recently spent an entire week. From the exclusive areas of the ship to our Yacht Club suite and even an exclusive section of MSC's private island, we're gonna show you it all. And along the way, we'll share even more Yacht Club perks, plus how we got an unbelievable deal on our Yacht Club stay. So grab a drink and make yourself comfortable for this ultimate Yacht Club experience. So we just got dropped off at the Miami cruise ship terminal. And since we're sailing Yacht Club on this cruise, we have heard that we have expedited access to the ship. And supposedly we're gonna be able to get on really quick. We'll let you know how long it takes. There goes our luggage. Already we're off for a really good start. As soon as we walked off the bus, this porter grabbed our luggage since we're in Yacht Club and we are heading inside and we'll tell you how long it takes. So this is a special Yacht Club check-in slash waiting area. It took us three minutes to get from the bus to this area. It's now been 10 minutes since we got off our bus and we are following a guy onto the ship. So far the Yacht Club boarding process is definitely living up to the hype. We've been off the bus for maybe 12 minutes so far and it looks like we are about to get on the ship. We are walking onto the ship and it's been 17 minutes since we got off the bus. And now we're following our guy who I assume is taking us to the Yacht Club area. It has been 21 minutes and it looks like we are coming up to the Yacht Club lounge area. Skylar grabbed our first drinks. Here they come. Ooh, a fruit no punch. No alcohol for me. Great. And Skylar's got a mimosa. Now the vacation begins. So it took us 20 minutes from getting off the ship to get here at the Yacht Club Lounge and another 20 minutes of sitting in the lounge before our room was ready. So I'm going to enjoy this drink and then we're going to go check out our room. We'd like to inform you that our hardworking cabin stewards are preparing your cabins. So they will be ready around 2 p.m. So as soon as they're ready, I will let you know mm. with another announcement. <laughs> but ours is ready. Now we haven't even been on the ship for an hour and we just heard an announcement that the staterooms will be ready around 2 p.m. But since we are in the Yacht Club, our room is already ready. And it is a perfect location for us. It's just a very short walk to the Top Sail Lounge where we can get our delicious coffees and our alcoholic drinks. But we are really excited to check out this balcony stateroom. Oh my. This looks nice. This is huge. Did we get our special pillows? Oh yeah, we, we <gasps> got to actually request our pillows on this cruise, right? Yes. I don't know, they seem pretty nice. And we also have a bottle of champagne waiting here for us. Uh, Chilled champagne. Awesome. Oh, Prosecco. Prosecco. Ooh, I wonder if our butler will bring us a bottle of Aperol. Well, let's see what's in the mini fridge. Okay. Specifically ask you ahead of time what you want in your mini fridge. Well, I requested tonic? white wine, actually. You request a white wine? Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. Either way, there's a lot of stuff in there. And it's <laughs> there included. is. All this is included? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, mini bar is included in Yacht Club, I am pretty sure. There's like iced teas in here. We will ask our butler to make sure it's yes. included, but I'm pretty sure it is. This is like a peach drink that's bio-organic. Wow. This is great. What and look at the these chocolate bar. Is the chocolate bar included? I don't know, but I'm going to eat it if it is. <laughs> so far, we are really impressed with this Yacht Club stateroom. It is very spacious and it's definitely the nicest bathroom we've ever had on a cruise ship. And the balcony is a very good size. But we are going to show you all of that later on when we do our tour. Right now, we are pretty hungry, so we're going to go grab some lunch. So instead of eating our first meal in the chaotic dining room like we have in the past, we are here in the Yacht Club dining room. And let me show you what we have to choose from. So for lunch today, we got some carpaccio, panna cotta, cob salad, and octopus soup. Entrees, we've got a fresh pasta, rockfish stew, we've got some steak, I think, and even a vegan option. And then of course, you've got your classics that you can always get and desserts. 
So I cannot wait to try the food here. So when you cruise with the Yacht Club, I believe all drinks up to $16 in value are included. Also, when you go to the Top Sail Lounge, they have a gin and tonic and Prosecco drink menu. I'm trying a Prosecco drink known as the Tunisian right now. I've never had it before. It has cinnamon in it and pepper, and it is really good. And I have got my first latte of the cruise. There's going to be many, many more. It is delicious. I'm not sure if this is the same uh, coffee that you'd get on the other areas of the ship, but I'm sure that I'll find out this week. So at our first lunch, the appetizers sounded really interesting to me. So I actually ordered three of them. The first of them is a bean-based soup with octopus. It looks really good. I'm really excited to try it. The octopus itself is really tender. I'd say it's really high quality octopus. I don't love the bean base of the soup too much, but I'll definitely be eating the octopus off the top of it. So one thing that I did remember from our prior MSC cruises is that some of the food just seems to be a little bit under seasoned and does taste a lot better when you add some salt and pepper. I just added a little bit of salt to this soup and it got exponentially better. We weren't really sure what panna cotta was, but we wanted to try it since it had caviar on it. Ooh. The consistency of the panna cotta is, is interesting. I think it's probably something you have to get used to a little bit, but I do think it's good. So I tried my second bite with a little piece of the asparagus and that just ties it all together. So I think it's a lot better when you eat all three of them together. So this steak must also have that truffle sauce on it because I can taste it and it's really good. All right, so this is the carpaccio. Jamie says I've had it before. I don't ever remember having it, but either way, I'm excited to try this one. I think it's some sort of fish. This is definitely avocado. That is not what I was expecting. This fish is pickled. Back in the day, um, I remember having pickled herring. It kind of reminds me of that. Um, not my favorite. Now this is just a typical Cobb salad. I don't think I'm gonna have any surprises with this one. It looks pretty good. So I wouldn't say it's anything special, but it is pretty good. And the blue cheese that they put on it is really good. Jamie is trying the carpaccio. I'm really only trying it because Skylar is making me because he wants to see my reaction. I don't know. You it might love it. I don't know about that. You love pickles. I do love pickles. Good pickle? Yeah. I don't know if this is the same. All right. <laughs> do you love it? <laughs> All right, so we thought we were done eating for lunch, but then we came to the pool and they had the buffet going on. They convinced us to try the sea bass and the lamb chops. Lamb chop and sea bass yeah. for dessert. <laughs> Sea bass is very good. What would you rate it out of 10? Probably an 8. Not bad for a buffet. Yeah. Is this the proper way you eat a lamb chop? You just <laughs> bite into it? I, I don't no, even know. I have no idea. Alright, I'm, you... I'm just going for it. No. Yeah. Man, probably like 8 out of 10, but for a buffet it would be 10 out of 10. <laughs> what did you get? This is a Hugo. It's another Prosecco drink, but this one has elderflower, mint, and lime. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, you would like it. After enjoying stage two of our lunch in the Yacht Club, I grabbed a fresh squeezed juice from the Yacht Club bar and we took a quick tour of the thermal spa, which we would have complimentary access to on our entire cruise. Another perk of booking in the Yacht Club. Next, we went back to our room to unpack our bags, which we finished just in time to catch the Miami sail away from the breathtaking Bridge of Sighs. After that, we headed back to our room for some sunset Prosecco drinks from our stateroom balcony. And although we still weren't all that hungry, it was time for our first Yacht Club dinner. So we're starting with the dumpling and the duck appetizer. It's okay. All right, this is the duck appetizer. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'd say maybe like a, a six. All right, so for the entree, I went with the tuna. Hopefully it tastes as good as it looks. It is cooked a little bit more than I would normally order tuna, but it's seasoned really well, and overall it is quite good. I'd probably give it a seven out of 10. So I ordered this stuffed pasta dish. I believe it's made in house. I'm really excited to try it. I think that it's stuffed with asparagus and some sort of cheese. I think with a little bit of salt, it's gonna be excellent. Okay, I added a little bit of salt. This is a lot better. I would give it an eight out of 10. 
We just finished our first dinner in the Yacht Club and honestly, it was a little bit disappointing. It's okay, I give it like a four. We both thought that our lunch that we had both inside the Yacht Club dining room and at the Yacht Club buffet was actually quite a bit better than what we had for dinner. Also, I tried ordering three different cocktails and they told me that they couldn't make any of them. So I ended up not even having a drink with my dinner. Now we do still have six more Yacht Club dinners to go on this cruise and we are hopeful that things will improve from here. Now, even though our dining experience tonight was a little bit disappointing, overall so far, our Yacht Club experience has been a good one. This was by far the least stressful embarkation process of getting on any cruise ship. And we've also been really impressed with our butler and the concierge. Good afternoon. It is day two of our experience here in the Yacht Club. Now we have a lot of catching up to do. I believe we left off talking about our dining experience last night. After that, we went to the Top Sail Lounge for a drink and found out that they were offering chocolate treats from the onboard chocolate shop, which is called Venchi. Now, if you've cruised on one of the newer MSC ships, then you might have tried their chocolate before, and it is really good, but it's also really expensive. Now, staff let us know that in the Yacht Club here, every night at 9 p.m., they have those treats. Now, I'm not sure if that's true on all MSC Yacht Club experiences, but we are definitely going to be stopping by at 9 p.m. every night to get those. After the Top Sail Lounge, we stopped by the Neon Party, which started off a little bit awkward, but ended up being a ton of fun after the staff showed up and really got the party going. And we had to end out the night getting our favorite cruise ship pizza. Now we could have ordered this through our butler here in the Yacht Club, but I think normally those are a whole pizza that you order to your room and we only wanted a couple slices. So we just went through the buffet, grabbed a couple slices and ate them out on our balcony. First night Yacht Club ending with the pizza from the buffet because it's so good. Now our second day in the Yacht Club did get off to a little bit of a late start since we stayed up for the glow party last night. but we did still make it up to the Yacht Club buffet before they stopped serving breakfast at 10 a.m. So the food on the Yacht Club breakfast buffet wasn't anything special. It was pretty much the same type and quality of food that you'll find on the main buffet. But what really separated the Yacht Club breakfast buffet from the main breakfast buffet was that there were no lines whatsoever. After breakfast, we did stop by the gym, which was really busy, but we were still able to get a good workout in prior to our reservation at the spot. Now, normally I would never pay money to go to the spot on a cruise ship, but since it comes included in the Yacht Club experience, I decided I would join Jamie at the spa today and I'm actually pretty glad that I did and we'll show you more of that experience now. Trying out the snow room. So we just left we just left one of the saunas but it was so steamy in there we couldn't really record. You don't see the steam but you immediately feel it. Now we're going into the snow room. Oh my god. Oh yeah that's cold. Ooh. Oh Okay, Woo! we're gonna see who can last the longest. Well, I agreed to let Jamie wear a towel so she has a little bit of an advantage, but. Okay. This is cold. It's not, like, once you get in here, it's not super bad. Let me take this. Yeah. It's All not right. Terrible. <laughs> Look at the yeah, snow I, down here. I don't feel as bad as I thought I would at this point, but. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably gonna start getting real bad real quick. Well, I think we've made it a minute. At least. <laughs> I can see I'm already shaking, shaking yeah. <laughs> My trunks aren't frozen yet. <laughs> They're both starting to shake now. It's hard to stop once you've started. <laughs> okay, it's getting pretty cold now. <laughs> it's got his teeth are chattering. Two minutes in now? Yeah. My yeah. teeth are chattering uncontrollably. Okay, I'm going to get out just to stop this because I want to go into the other room. So I win? You win. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. So is this what they call the ice bucket challenge? I don't know. I saw that You gotta sk step spot. up a little bit. It's gotta be. Hot or cold? It's um, uh, I'd say it's warm. Okay. I would say either, yeah. Cold shower followed by warmness. And you know that one's cold, right? Yeah, it's like a cold water bottle. Get in. No. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. And then this one. Oh yeah. It's nice and warm. This is my favorite. Holy 
Okay, that's better. And this is gonna be freezing again, right? Yeah. Oh, this is gonna suck. Why does everyone like this? You don't have to do it the whole time. <laughs> That's supposed to be good for you, right? I think so. <laughs> After getting all of the cold experiences out of the way, it was time to thaw out a bit, and with temperatures of 176 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, this Finnish classical sauna would definitely do the trick. Next up was the dark sensory bath, which like the Finnish sauna was quite relaxing. So you got a nice shower to keep yourself cool. Our last stop of this trip to the spa was the Himalayan salt room, where we both could have easily fallen asleep. Now after a couple of hours at the spa, we made our way back up to deck 20 for lunch at the Yacht Club Buffet. I got a little more than anticipated. Yeah, you did. And once again, we were really impressed. They had the sea bass again, which we both loved the day prior. It was really good again. They also had amberjack as well. We both thought that was amazing and gave it a nine out of 10. They also had steak that was cooked a perfect to medium rare. We both thought that was about an eight out of 10. And they also had some really good fresh fruit and some blue cheese on the buffet. Now we do plan on eating in the actual Yacht Club restaurant for lunch at least once more on this trip. But honestly, we could eat in that buffet every Every day for lunch because it's so delicious and so quick and convenient. And that actually brings us to the present time. So after lunch, we came back to our stateroom and it had been cleaned so nicely. It looks just like it did whenever we arrived yesterday, but we had another treat waiting for us, which it was more chocolate from our butler. So I think we're gonna eat this chocolate and decide what we're gonna do before the fancy dinner night. Right I don't now? normally like milk chocolate, but their milk chocolate is so good. It's really creamy. I don't know what they do, but yeah. And the almond slivers in that are delicious. So night two is the formal dining night on this cruise, which means we're gonna have to dress up nice. Mm -hmm. Then we're probably gonna have to start getting ready within a couple of hours. But first we do have one more thing that we wanna do and we're gonna show it to you. And we actually didn't even realize this whirlpool existed until last night when we heard a bunch of noise coming from down below and looked down from our balcony and saw it. And on this night, we knew that these whirlpools would have a great view of sunset. So it was time to make a brief exit from the Yacht Club to check out this somewhat hidden area of the ship. The night two sunset sure did not disappoint and the whirlpool felt great after an active day on the seascape. But there was still one more spot at the back of the ship that I wanted to check out before heading back up to the Yacht Club for dinner. And that spot was the infinity pool which had an even better view of sunset from the back of the ship. And after a few mandatory sunset selfies, it was time to get ready for dinner, but not before grabbing a quick drink from the poolside bar. So as usual, my attempts to find a good dirty martini on a cruise ship have been pretty unsuccessful on this one, but this dirty martini actually looks pretty promising. Yeah, that's good. So we just got back from watching Sunset Down on Deck 8, and it seems like every time we leave our room, we come back to a new snack. But this time they must have known we were craving something a little bit healthier because we got a bowl of fruit. And it actually contains some of our favorite fruits that are a little unusual, including rambutans and golden berries. Mm. They're good. A couple floors up, it was time for dinner at the Top Sail restaurant, which as usual had a good variety of starters, entrees, desserts, and healthy options to choose from. Skyloo is probably most excited to find escargot on the menu, and he could not wait to try it. Skyloo is always so excited to try these. That tastes just like the ones on Celebrity. Very good. I got the shellfish bisque for an appetizer. Maybe like a four or five. So tonight I was having a hard time choosing what to order and our waiter had suggested surf and turf and we just both couldn't pass that up. I'm gonna try the lobster first. Pretty good. I like the sauce on it. Ranking? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> it is very good, but I personally enjoyed that fish at lunch a little bit better. I'd probably give this maybe an eight. Eight for the lobster? Yeah. All right, now it's time to try the steak. Yeah, it's good. Ten. <laughs> no. 
So Skylar said this off camera, but this is the best thing that we have had. 10 out of 10, right? 10 out of 10. <laughs> so we also got this monkfish and shellfish dish, and we both love monkfish, so we just had to try it. That's also very good. All right, so I got the crepe Suzette. I don't know if I've ever had a crepe Suzette before. That is super sweet, but it's delicious. How would you rank it on the desserts you've had on MSC? It's probably one of the best desserts that I've had on MSC cruises. Probably an eight. I got the cheesecake with a passion fruit topping. It's a very dense cheesecake. It's not too sweet. I like it quite a bit. I'd probably give it a seven out of 10. Good morning. We are just getting into the Dominican Republic. This is Puerto Plata. Our third day in the Yacht Club was the day that we probably spent the least amount of time on the ship, and that's because we were visiting Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, one of the few Caribbean ports we had never visited on any of our prior cruises. We did start our day off with breakfast from the Yacht Club buffet, but because we were so excited to get off the ship, we barely filmed any of it. Once on land, we spent our day checking out some of the main tourist attractions, as well as some more authentic, off-the-beaten-path spots. We ended our day in Puerto Plata by relaxing on this amazing lazy river, which to our surprise was no extra charge to access. Overall, we agreed that Puerto Plata was one of our new favorite ports and one we definitely wouldn't recommend skipping. To see more of our incredibly inexpensive yet wonderful day in this beautiful Dominican city, be sure to check out our YouTube shorts for more Puerto Plata content. But for now, it's time to head back out to sea and to enjoy another fantastic Yacht Club dinner. Our night three dinner began with two starters, the first of which was a crab cake and earned a solid seven star rating from me and eight stars from Skylar. But our second starter was the beef tartare and was way too much like raw hamburger for me, earning it my only one star rating in the Yacht Club. This dish was much less offensive to Skylar, earning a six of 10 rating from him. Next up were the entrees, which included lobster ravioli and prime rib. I am first going to try the lobster stuffed ravioli. So let's be honest, we know the prime rib is going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really good. Out of 10? I'd say maybe 8. So I think this is the fourth time we've had prime rib on an MSC cruise. So like Jamie said, we know it's going to be good. We capped night three off in the top sail lounge with an espresso martini for Skylar and some tea for me. And speaking of tea, the Yacht Club does offer a formal afternoon tea service that comes with a sampling of small desserts and pastries, which we got to experience on day two at the captain's party. Our fourth day on the seascape got started with yet another great perk of staying in the Yacht Club. Good morning. We actually ordered in breakfast from room service. We have got French toast along with what they call a breakfast sandwich, but it kind of looks more like Eggs Benedict to me. And Norwegian salmon, fresh squeezed orange juice and grapefruit juice, as well as rye toast. We found the room service breakfast to be similar quality to that of the buffets, but we loved that we could enjoy it from our own private stateroom while taking in the views of our day four port destination, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Oh, we thought we were gonna have a nice view of downtown San Juan, but this carnival ship decided to join us. Now, if you're familiar with our channel, you know that we're quite familiar with San Juan. And while we do love this city, we knew that most of the cruisers would be getting off the ship here, making it the perfect opportunity to film our MSC Seascape ship tour. And if you're interested in seeing that ship tour or our tours of the Meraviglia and Seaside, or all the things we love and don't love about sailing with MSC, then be sure to check out our MSC playlist after this video. Since we spent most of this day filming our ship tour, we didn't spend hardly any of our day in the Yacht Club, but we sure weren't gonna miss our night for dinner in the top sale restaurant. For starters, I ordered the seafood salad, which came with shrimp, squid, scallops, and mussels, and was pretty much amazing. And while Skylar's Caribbean fish soup wasn't quite as good, he still gave it a solid seven out of 10. For his entree, Skylar decided to order off of the healthy section of the menu, and this creamy oyster risotto got a six out of 10. Not bad for a healthy dish. My entree choice was the filet mignon off of the classic menu, which earned eight stars for me and nine from Skylar, which is pretty great for a menu item that's available every night. While Skylar enjoyed some of my filet mignon, I ran down to the top sail lounge to grab a couple of Vinci chocolates. And when I returned, our awesome waiter Jeffrey was there to meet me with my chocolate souffle, which was the best dessert I've had on an MSC ship, and even got a six out of 10 from the chocolate hater. 
We ended night four in the top sale lounge with cocktails, chocolates, and the talented musician Breno, who had an awesome set list and the best voice of any musician we've seen on a cruise ship. Skylar just spotted a water rainbow. I don't know if it will come through on the camera or not, but it's pretty cool. So it is day five here in the Yacht Club and we have a lot of catching up to do. I think last time you saw us, we were enjoying dinner in the Yacht Club area. And then after dinner, we didn't really have any plans. We just hung out in the top sail lounge. We had some cocktails, we met some other cruisers, and we also listened to the onboard musician who was playing that night. Yeah, that musician was awesome. His name was Breno, he's from Brazil. We thought he was extremely talented, probably the best solo musician we've ever seen on a cruise ship. Yeah, so if you sail on this ship, make sure to go check out Breno. Now we did pop out just a little bit to check out the white party, and that was the place to be. It was a lot of energy and a lot of fun. But after such a long day of filming, we were pretty exhausted, and the top sail lounge is more of our vibe. And that brings us to today, which is day five and our second sea day. And honestly, it's been a pretty chill day. We spent a lot of time just relaxing in the Yacht Club area and also out on our balcony. But we were also excited to get back up to the Yacht Club buffet for lunch because they consistently have really delicious fish. And today I think they had grouper and salmon and the salmon was a 10 out of 10. Now since today has been a little bit more relaxed, we thought that this afternoon would be the perfect time to give you a tour of our suite. So we're gonna show you around. Now at the entrance of our suite, you're gonna find a few hooks. We found this to be a great spot to hang our Yacht Club robes, as well as our Yacht Club slippers. You're also gonna find your key card holder. You do have to have a key card inserted in order for your lights and your outlets to work. Next to that is the main switch for the lights. If you click it once, the overhead lights turn off. If you click it twice, the accent lights turn off and it's completely dark. Next to that are buttons to communicate with your room attendant. If you do want them to come in and clean up, you can choose the makeup room. If you don't wanna be disturbed, hit the do not disturb button. But be aware that if you have this on, you might miss out on some of their specialty treats, which may include a fruit basket, chocolates, and other sweets. Now on the other side of the entrance into the suite, you're gonna find a glass shelf. You might not think much of it, but we have been using it a lot. We have been putting our dirty dishes or our dirty towels or anything else we'd like our room attendant to take. It keeps these items out of sight and the room neat and less cluttered. Next up is one of two closets, which are pretty spacious. We really like that the lights turn on when you open the doors. Across from the closet is the biggest and nicest bathroom we've ever had on a cruise ship. We found there to be a lot of storage space in this bathroom. We're here for seven days and we found a place for everything that is not on a counter or on one of the shelves. They do provide shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and body lotion, but by far the best thing about this bathroom has to be the shower. Now this shower has a rainfall shower head, which has really nice pressure. It also has a handheld shower, as well as a place to dry your clothes and a place to sit down. Outside of the bathroom is our Nespresso machine and our snack area. This is great if you wanna make a cup of coffee or espresso in the morning to sit out on your balcony. But honestly, we have barely used it because the Top Sail Lounge makes excellent lattes and cappuccinos and it's just a short walk away. Underneath this area is additional shelving, which we're only using to store our champagne bucket. Then there is this really nice sized desk area, which is great if you need to get some work done on your cruise. It also has very spacious drawers. On the left is where you'll find information for laundry service and also where you would order your breakfast for room service. We've been using the drawer on the right for all of our electronics and we were really impressed that it fit everything in it. Now on the other side of the room is the king size bed with a ridiculous amount of pillows. The week before we embarked, we got to choose what kind of pillows we wanted from a pillow menu and that's the first time we were able to do that on a cruise. There are nightstands on either side of the bed. They've got some drawers as well as accent lights, reading lights, and you can turn on and off the main lights from both sides of the bed. And the left side of the bed does have one charging port as well. Now we're getting to more bonus areas over here. As you can see, we've got a pretty big TV. It's probably the biggest we've had in a cruise ship stateroom before. Below we've got more shelves and counter space, the lights to the desk and mirror area, two American outlets, two USB outlets, information to contact our butler, 
the QR code to scan for room service, two international outlets, and the phone. It's really hard to find complaints about this room, but one that we do have has to do with the American plugins here. As you can see, there's only two of them and they are right next to each other. So if you've got something like this that you have to plug in, that is going to take up both of them. So if you have a bunch of things that you need to plug into American ports, we would recommend considering bringing a converter to make these ports usable. Now under here is where you'll find your bottle opener as well as everything you need for coffee and tea. And usually you'll find your champagne glasses up here, but we used ours last night and haven't gotten our replacements. And next to that is the mini bar, which normally on cruises we don't touch because it is extra and usually it's pretty expensive, but it is included in the yacht club. We have been taking advantage of it. Skylar's got a bottle of Prosecco in there right now but he's also got some Heinekens, I've got some fruit juice, some teas, some waters, and we do get one chocolate bar. I'm saving it until the end though. Next is the second of two closets. It has an area for hanging clothes as well as several drawers, and this is where you're gonna find the safe. Across from the second closet is a sitting area with a nice love seat that actually has a pullout bed, and next to that is the biggest balcony that we've ever had on a cruise. Now that does end the tour of the best stateroom we have ever stayed in on a cruise ship. It is going to be a little bit tough to go back to those interior staterooms, but thankfully we still have a couple more days to enjoy this while it lasts. Now that you've toured our room, it's time to see our day five dinner, which brings us back to the Top Sail restaurant. And since this video is already getting a bit long, it all happens so fast. We're gonna give you the quick recap. For starters, Skylar got the steamed dumplings, which earned a nine out of 10 and were way better than the fried dumplings from night one. These are a step up for sure. I went with the herb salmon, which was a bit unusual, but overall quite good. For entrees, Skylar went with the rack of lamb, which he thankfully used his silverware to eat this time and rated a seven out of 10. And I went with the Indian butter chicken from the healthy menu. So I got the butter chicken. It was recommended by our waiter and it smells really good. I had to question whether this dish was really healthy because it tasted great too. I think I'm gonna give it an eight. Now, because we both love scallops, we decided to order the scallop entree as well, which came with the same delicious butter sauce as the night chew lobster, earning them another excellent rating. I'll give the scallops a nine. We somehow found room for dessert as well, and both my chocolate duo cake and Skylar's tiramisu earned an eight out of 10. Thinking about maybe a nine, I'll stick with an eight. That's good. After all that food, we were ready to hit the bed, but not before stopping by Le Cabaret Rouge to check out the silent disco. Good morning. It is day six and we are ported here in Nassau, Bahamas. Now it is another rainy and kind of cloudy day. Rainy. which we are absolutely loving. It has cooled it down and the rain kind of keeps a lot of people inside. So that means we have been enjoying the outdoor space in the yacht club nearly all to ourselves. As our Shorex always say, it's not the weather, but the person you share the day with that make the difference. We've been in the hot tub in the front of the ship and had it to ourselves. And we had our pick of the cabanas. Now we did venture outside of the yacht club area early this morning to film the main breakfast buffet for our ship tour video. And that was complete chaos. We had to circle the dining room two times just to find a couple of seats next to each other. So we are really appreciating the peace and quiet in the Yacht Club today. Now we didn't arrive in port until around noon today, which is a little bit later than usual. Don't need to rush down the gateway and we didn't get the cleanest yet. And the all aboard isn't until 7.30 tonight. All aboard, all aboard at 7.30. So I think we've decided we are gonna hang on the ship and enjoy it while it's a little less crowded and everybody is out on land. And then later this afternoon, when hopefully a lot of people are coming back to the ship, we're gonna head out and explore. After enjoying another hot tub to ourselves, the pool to ourselves, and pretty much the entire outdoor yacht club area to ourselves, we decided to hit the water slides as we figured they wouldn't be too busy on this dreary day and we were right. After that, we grabbed lunch at the Yacht Club Buffet, which on this day had a whole roasted hog and the biggest ball of fresh mozzarella that we've ever seen. Once again, lunch was great, especially the cheese and the fish. Since the entire ship was still pretty empty, we stopped by a couple bars, Nicholas Cocktail, yeah, then made one more trip to the spa before heading out to explore Nassau for a bit. After touring the Newport area, checking out an old library, and enjoying a local beer, we made it back onto the ship for a sunset sail away. 
and after a stop through the kids' buffet for a quick corn dog snack, we were back at the Top Sale restaurant for our night six dinner. So for our starters tonight, I went with the fresh mozzarella caprese and Skylar went with the fried seafood option. I'd say the mozzarella is as good as that giant mozzarella ball that we had on the lunch buffet. I'll give it an eight. So I got the fried seafood appetizer. It has shrimp, calamari, and some sort of fried fish. So the shrimp was like a nine, but the calamari was like a two. So maybe like a five overall. Next up were the entrees, and we had some great options to choose from. So I got the veal asabuco. I've had pork asabuco before, but never veal asabuco. It is absolutely humongous. Also, when I went to cut it, it just fell apart. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be amazing, but we'll find out. Now we have had lasagna on other MSC ships, and we know it's good already. Mm -hmm. And after one of our best dinners yet, we were ready for a good night's sleep, as the next morning we'd be visiting one of our favorite spots in the Caribbean. But first, we had to make our nightly appearance at the Top Sail Lounge. <laughs> Day seven in the Yacht Club started off much different than the day prior, as we woke up to find vivid blue waters and hardly a cloud in the sky. And since we wanted to spend every possible minute of this day on Ocean K, we ordered a quick room service breakfast before heading to the Top Sail Lounge. It was here that we met our butler, who escorted us off the ship into the pickup point for our shuttle to our exclusive area of the island. Having no patience for waiting around, Skylar decided to make the half mile walk to the Ocean House Beach while I stayed back with the rest of the group. So there is transportation that will take you from the ship to the Yacht Club area, but I wanted to get some exercise this morning. Plus I was curious if it'd be faster to walk to the Yacht Club area versus wait for the shuttle. So I am walking, Jamie is waiting for the shuttle and we'll see who gets there first. After what seemed like a pretty long wait, our shuttle did finally show up, but by that time, I was sure that Skylar was already at Ocean House Beach. So normally we have to take a left at this sign, but this time we can keep on going. And I do think I beat the transportation here, so I may be the first guest in the entire Yacht Club area. I am definitely the first person here. I think it's because they're still trying to get the space ready, so they're probably purposely delaying the golf cart. All right, guys, I've been here probably 15 minutes, and it looks like the first group of people just arrived on a golf cart, so I definitely would recommend walking to the Yacht Club area on Ocean K if you got the energy. By the time I arrived at Ocean House Beach, we still had our pick of seats in the air-conditioned bar area, out on the patio, or down on the beach. So we started off inside where we enjoyed a couple of drinks. And while the drink options were quite a bit better than at other bars on the island, Oh, uh, that looks really good. We found that the options were still far less than what you can find on the ship. Even so, I was just happy that I could still get a latte. And after enjoying a couple of drinks in the AC, we made our way out to the patio. And unlike the rest of the island, where you have to eat at the buffet or from one of the stands, at Ocean House Beach, you get the restaurant experience. Like the drink menu, the food menu was also quite limited compared to on the ship, but we still found some items we were excited to try, including the crab ceviche and charred octopus starters, and the lobster roll and cheeseburger entrees. Of the four items, the starters impressed us the most, with the charred octopus getting a 7-star rating and the crab salad earning an 8. The lobster roll bun was quite dry, but the lobster was good, earning it a 6 of 10. The burger was cooked a bit too well for our taste, but was still pretty decent, earning it a 5 out of 10. And for dessert, we decided to share this caramel cream, which earned a 6 from me, but an 8 from Skylar. While the food overall may not have been spectacular, the views at the Ocean House sure were, and we agreed we'd still much rather dine here than anywhere else on the island. But the food and drinks have never been top on our list of what we love about Ocean K, as it's the beaches and the beauty that keep us coming back. And speaking of beaches, Yacht Club guests have their own private one just a few short steps from the Ocean House. So the sand here in the Yacht Club beach area is really nice and soft, but once you get in the water, it does quickly become very rocky. So I would definitely recommend bringing water shoes if you do plan to get in the water. What do you think? Oh man, the water feels so good because it's very hot right now, but it is gorgeous. So no, clear. It is. We have heard that there's some decent snorkeling in the Yacht Club area. Normally fish seem to hang out in rocky areas, so we do see this point of rocks over here. 
I'm gonna dive in and see if it's gonna stick. While we did spot a few fish at Ocean House Beach and found it to be a pretty nice beach overall, there was another beach close by that we liked quite a bit more, as it was just as beautiful but with softer sand and better snorkeling. And while we show you some of our snorkeling footage, along with some other shots from this picturesque island, we're going to tell you about how we got a great deal on our stay in the Yacht Club. We initially booked our seven-night Western Caribbean cruise out of Miami as an interior stateroom for $942, including tax and port fees. This comes out to around $130. $35 per night and included the Easy Plus drink package, free Wi-Fi for one device per person, and a $50 onboard credit. Now one reason we love sailing during the fall is that it's hurricane season and kids are back in school. This means that the ships are often far from full and you're much more likely to get a free upgrade. And that's exactly what we got on this cruise. As just a few days after booking, we were upgraded to a deluxe balcony room. Around this time, we also received an email about additional upgrades to our stateroom, including upgrading to a yacht club Club Deluxe Suite for an extra $2,560. Now this would have more than tripled the price of our cruise, and as much as we wanted to sail in the Yacht Club, the price was far out of our budget. But MSC also has a bidding system, which allows you to bid on higher levels of rooms when they're available. So we put in a bid of $710 for an upgrade to a Yacht Club Deluxe Suite, and while we weren't too confident we'd get upgraded for this bid, we figured it was worth a shot. And to our amazement, a few weeks later, we received notice that we'd been upgraded to a Yacht Club suite. So to do the math, it cost us approximately $1,650 or $825 per person with taxes, fees, and port charges for our seven-day cruise in the Yacht Club. That amount increased to right around $900 when you add in MSE's $14 per day gratuities and subtract our $50 onboard credit. Now we've gotten some pretty awesome vacation deals in the past, but at less than $130 per person per night for this vacation in the Yacht Club, this had to have been our best. And while we have no idea if we'll ever be able to get this great of deal on an MSC cruise again, we're sure gonna try. Now for a quick comparison, if you wanted to book a 7-day Western Caribbean cruise on the Seascape in October of 2024, booking a guaranteed Yacht Club suite would probably run you around $6,300 total, or around $453 per person per day, or about three and a half times what we paid to sail in the Yacht Club. So would you pay $453 per person per day to cruise for a week in a yacht club suite? Let us know in the comments. After another wonderful day on Ocean K, most of the beach bars were closing down and it was time to get back on the ship for one last dinner in the Yacht Club and the Ocean K Lighthouse Show. We made it up to the Top Sail Restaurant just as the sun was setting over Ocean K and we couldn't have thought of a more beautiful setting for our last dinner in the Yacht Club. On this night, our starters included a shrimp cocktail for me, Good trip. And the dumpling soup for Skylar. I'm trying to give that an eight too. It's good. I would give the sunset behind you a ten. For entrees, Skylar ordered the lamb shank, which we both thought was fantastic. The meat is tender. The sauce is really good. It's obviously huge. I think I gotta give it a nine. For my entree, I chose the filet and shrimp, which ended up being another great decision. I think the filet mignon is more tender than the last time that we got it, but I still prefer the one that has the truffle sauce on it. So because of that, I have to give this one a nine. But if it had the truffle sauce, it'd be a 10. I'll try the shrimp now. So I agree the filet mignon is incredibly tender, cooked perfectly, I'd give that a nine and I'd give the shrimp a seven, so overall I'd give this dish an eight. And while not at all hungry, we couldn't not order dessert on our last night, and we're sure glad that we did. So we got the pistachio ice cream and cherries jubilee. I gave the pistachio ice cream a nine. It was probably the best pistachio ice cream I've had. What do you give the cherries jubilee? I'd give it a What? A card trick from our amazing waiter capped off what was probably our best dinner experience in the Yacht Club yet before making our way downstairs to the Top Sail Lounge, where we had the best seats in the house for the incredibly unique and always entertaining MSC Lighthouse Show. After a few more chocolates, a bedtime tea, and one last song from Breno, we made our last trip back to our stateroom to find even more chocolate. While this week in the Yacht Club was surely our best experience sailing with MSC, it was far from our first, and to hear all about what we love and don't love about cruising with MSC, go ahead and click on this video next. Thanks for watching!